Tommy, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to have you back on the podcast again. How are you doing? Very good. How are you? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really well, thank you. Really well. And, um, yeah, it's, I, I checked when, we, when you was last on, and I think it was like um, last October, I think it was. But it feels longer than that. And then I remember you was like one of the first people that I ever, when I first started podcasting, that I ever did an Instagram live with, like a proper kind of a podcast, you know, on, on video with. And, um, you know, I'm really grateful, you know, to be a friend and to still be in touch with you. It's really nice. I know. I remember when you started your whole podcast and you're, I'm like, let's do an Instagram live. <laughs> and yeah. we did it and you were just so brave about it. And like we just talked about mindset and what was important for people during that time. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think it's, it's that leap of faith, isn't it? And just kind of stepping out your comfort zone, really. And uh, just kind of taking that step, isn't it, ultimately? Um, for sure, yeah. Getting out of comfort zone. Most people like to be yeah. comfortable and not mm. get out of it because there's that risk. Yeah. Like, do I fail or is it right? Is it wrong? And then some people just get in their head and they don't even take action on it. So that was very good that you did that. Like, yeah. Look at you no, now. Thank- You're doing podcasts all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. And I really, I really appreciate your support. And I think it's, it's just that that momentum, isn't it? Getting that momentum and just building on that confidence, isn't it? And then once you kind of get into the groove of it. You're kind of doing it without thinking in some way after a while yeah and the momentum is definitely when when, when you start doing something it's a little scary because of the unknown but mm. you start continuing to do it over and over and over again you do build that confidence yeah no definitely and and i was thinking because like if people haven't seen over episodes like you're a life coach and you do coaching and um i kind of thought we talk about like how you know, like in these times of COVID, like pivoting and adapting and, you know, mindset and that kind of thing. And, um, you know, kind of what you're, you've been up to since, like, you know, we've last chat, you know, had conversation and things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, even in my business, like I started my business two years ago and I was working with women real estate agents. But before that, I was working with anyone who had a pulse. <laughs> I was yeah. like anybody who had a pulse I was coaching seeing like what worked what didn't work and then I worked with women in real estate and then I wanted to work with um, women that were entrepreneurs that had an idea and wanted to take that idea and make it into a business and so that was something that I really enjoyed the process of of like seeing an idea become a reality and so that really like really inspired me. So I was like, all right, I want to work with women entrepreneurs that are starting a business and wanting to get their ideas to become real. Like one of my clients, she had all of these ideas. She had like five ideas and she didn't for five years, didn't take any action on any of them. She was just thinking about it, thinking about it. And so she hired me and she started a jewelry line. And so now she gets all of her materials from Beirut, gets all of her gems from Beirut and now she has 32 pieces of jewelry that she's going to inspire women to feel beautiful when they put it on they you know there's like a whole story behind it and so it's it's beautiful to see that now she's like oh my god I can't wait to launch this and it was an idea and now she has her idea with her vision in reality so that was very I, I love seeing that so that's what I love doing with women is taking their ideas and making it become their own and they own it yeah no i see and it's amazing to see how people can grow and shift isn't it like you said people having those ideas and you know manifesting those ideas into like reality isn't it and it's kind of just drawing draw, drawing from that and it just kind of shows you how kind of how much how much power people have isn't it really i suppose you know within them yeah it's definitely with if, nobody's going to believe in you better or harder than yourself So if Mm. you don't believe in your product or you don't believe in your idea and you don't get excited about it, nobody else is going to get excited more than you. So it's all the mindset for yourself to to break through those limiting beliefs because we all have these Mm. limiting beliefs of, is it going to work? Am I worthy of this? Do I deserve this? Am I going to fail? All of that comes to even including myself, like starting a business. I'm like, oh my God, am I even qualified to do this? Yeah. And, and then that that's a limiting belief and then I get coaching and you're like of course 
you have 10 years worth of transformational work and you've been putting yourself through self-development courses. So of course, teach other people how they could do that. And so I'm like, mm, okay, you know, cause the self-doubt comes in and mm. taking myself off that ledge. And also now that's what I coach women on doing. It's like, mm. oh, they have those limiting beliefs and that's what mm. stops all of us. So your mind is very powerful. Mm. Yeah, no, it's, it's so true. You, what you mentioned, and I think like you said, it's, it's kind of, it's recognizing that, isn't it? And being honest about that. Like, you know, like you said, if you, if you have self-doubt or something comes up, you know, kind of, going okay so what is that and take you know take, take responsibility for it as you said and like we're all human we've, we've all got you know our own like shit so to speak um but like i said taking that responsibility for it was some people sometimes and we can probably do it sometimes is you know oh that isn't me you know or you know some people might put it aside or, or be a victim or something it's like well no it's you've got to kind of accept that and do something with that isn't it because how else are you going to move forward and things like that yeah it's it's when you get in your own way people get in their own way and that's what stops them and nothing else outside of them is stopping them besides themselves so Mm. being honest with yourself and seeing like oh wait a second this is really me that's stopping myself and mm. instead of playing that victim, I'm like, oh, well, this, this happens to me as a child and my experience and my environment and, oh my God, I can't do this because of that. Those are just excuses. And mm. a lot of people make that their reality. And when they do that, they're like, see, I can't do what I want to do because of X, Y, Z. And then their idea just stays an idea and doesn't become what it is that they really want to fruition. So mm. yeah, you can, and, and everybody's manifesting no matter what whether you know about it or not you're manifesting period <laughs> whether yeah. you know about it or you don't know about it it's you're, you're still in control of your life and taking that responsibility for who you are mm. in your mindset instead of being this victim because when you're being a victim you don't get what you want yeah i think i, I can definitely relate to that you know before i did a podcast because i kind of wanted to do it for a couple of years like two or three years and i remember like you know coming you know those kind of beliefs or those thoughts like oh is it it's not going to work who's going to listen to it you know worrying about what people are going to think and all this kind of like stuff and i think that that you know i think that can happen throughout life but it's like noticing that and not letting that kind of really shadow what you actually want to do isn't it or just telling yourself you know i i am worthy enough to to do xyz and you know for so for so many people and i've seen it with a lot of people especially you know, some people I know who who make you know might make music, and yeah, that's a very competitive industry. But I I'd say to you, just just put out content, just you know TikTok, look at TikTok, you know the the, the possibilities of the internet, and it's just those small kind of steps, isn't it? And I think sometimes people want, I mean, it's quite complex, but I think people want instant results straight away, and it doesn't always work like that, does it? It doesn't. I mean, if. If I put out a TikTok and become viral, like that's not my yeah. intention. <laughs> my intention <laughs> is to bring value to people and yeah. give as much information as I know to help someone else's life. And then getting mm. those comments and people in my DMs like, that was very thoughtful of you. I, I got inspired by what you wrote. I got inspired by what you did. You know, I'm taking that on. Thanks for the tips. Like I started doing uh, tips with Tammy on a Tuesday. And the first time I started doing it for Facebook, um, first time I did it, I had 45 takes. I had sticky notes on my phone. (laughs) Like, what am I going to talk about? I was so nervous. I had like four hours worth of one video that was three minutes long. And I was getting in my head around it. I was like, oh my God, what am I going to say? No one's going to listen to me. No one's going to really care about this. And I'm going to sound stupid. It's not going to land for the other person. And then I just hit record. But I took that risk of like letting it go and letting the universe take care of it. And now I, I've been doing it for a year now and tips with Tammy on a Tuesday. I do it now within two to three minutes. I do one take and I'm done and I don't need my sticky notes. I just really open up my heart and I start listening to like what it is that I want to say and how it's going to come out and whatever I, I'm going to say is perfect. 
now I have people in my DM saying, I can't wait. Like for my birthday, I got like 20 messages from people like, I love seeing your tips with Tammy on a Tuesday. And I'm like, you watch it? <laughs> you listen to me? <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. So yeah, I mean, it starts with just taking that first step and doing mm. it and getting messy and failing and letting you letting yourself just get messy with it and mess it mm. all up so that you can mm. see what works, what doesn't work. Mm. Yeah, that's really lovely. And I think it's great. I, you know, I love the work that you do and I like the posts that you do and I really like your show. And I think, you know, you just like really genuine in what you do and you just want to help other people and provide that value. And I think that's so priceless, you know, and, and rewarding as well because you're helping other people. You don't know what other people are going through and what, you know, your video and content like does for them in their day. And I think it's that kind of, um ripple effects isn't it in some in some aspect and yeah. um you just don't know what feedback you're going to get yeah and it you know i because me i'm my worst critic <laughs> i'm like oh my god i don't look good the lighting's not good i should have posted <laughs> and then i'm like no it doesn't really matter if my camera's not lit up right and i don't have a, a, yeah. a light or i don't have like perfect audio it's more the message that i'm mm. wanting to portray and then you know throughout the time of doing it i was like oh maybe i should stand more in the light maybe i should be walking when i do it maybe i should mm. be doing this and i'm seeing like what works and what feels comfortable for me because it's going to come from me what mm. i'm going to be saying and making that impact for somebody else so i i love doing tips with tammy on a tuesday and then people let me know that, oh, I did it. I took this on and oh my God, it worked. And I'm like, mm. all right, good. If it worked yeah. for one person, I did my job. Yeah, that's that's it. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? You know, like even if you help that one person, you still help someone in their life. And I think people, when they make content, I mean, I'm, I'm not knocking social media at all. Like I think it's a great tool, but I think sometimes people can, we can sometimes look at stuff and go, oh, we can probably compare ourselves or think, oh, that's how, you know, what's the right or normal way to be or do a video. Like you said, it's, it's those kind of like clunky bits and, you know, it's not meant to be probably great the first few times you do it, you know, like the lighting or whatever. And, um, I did a video the other day and I was, I was walking my dogs and it was really windy and like, cause it was windy. Um, the, the 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 microphone didn't even pick up what I was saying or half of what I of what I was saying. I was like, so like, I can't post that. People are, you know, or or you might look a certain way, that kind of thing. So, you know, stuff happens, isn't it? And you don't have to have the best lighting. You don't have to have the best mic or anything like that, do you? And it's the kind of it's the message behind what you're saying, isn't it? Really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the message. I mean, look at Elon Musk. Look at how many rockets he threw up in the air and fell through and, and crashed and burned a billion dollars on the ground. And, you know, but he's like, nope, we're going to get there. We're going to do it again, mm. we're gonna do it again and do it again until we get it right. And that's, that, I look at that and that's like inspiration for me. I'm like, dang, he spent all this time and energy on making his dream become a reality. Mm. And he's doing it. Why can't I do it? yeah that's it and it, it that's that's a good point and it's like that that boring company he did like it, boring like the holes through like cities and stuff you think what but you know he's he's got a point hasn't he you know he's, he's got something that that fits and it works and as you said i think it's like you know if, if you deep down want to do something you know like do it and like um I mentioned earlier before we came on is that you, you've done like this you're doing this master is a mastermind course thing mm -hmm. yeah mastermind course with women entrepreneurs because it's what's worked for me is building community and tribe like having a community around me that supports my ideas that mm. is going to uplift me and if you're like on a negative vibration i can't be around you at the moment that i'm building something because i need to bring yeah. myself up to believing what i'm doing is like important mm. and so putting the right people in place so that i can build this mastermind like i have two coaches and you know i'm like struggling with what i'm gonna say what am i gonna do i have a billion yeah. ideas and i'm like okay now just focus on the outcome like what do women want to get what's the transformation that they want to get like what is that going to be like for them at the end of this program 
And so I'm building all of these cute little programs now that I'm like so super excited because when you build community, you're co-creating with other women entrepreneurs that are in the same vibration that they want to build something, whatever it is, whether it's a marketing firm or you want to do mugs or you want to do candles or you want to do anything that you want to build, a coaching program, whatever it is, and you're in tribe and community, you have other people that you could get support from when you're feeling down and out. And that's what's really helped me is, is, is masterminds because without masterminds, I would probably be thinking about what I wanted to do instead of doing it. Yeah, that's it. And it's like you said, it's surrounding, surrounding yourself, you know, the right kind of people and that right, that right kind of energy. And um, I'm, just, I'm still talking about doctors. Oh, no, it's all right. Um, yeah, the, um, the right kind of energy and the right kind of people around you um, to kind of, you know, like I said, that, that sense of community and the right people in that, in that community as well and building that, you know, networking with the right people as well. Because I think if you're around the right kind of people, you're more than likely going to probably take action and have that support in what you're doing, if that makes sense. Yeah, because I mean, if, if I hung around a bunch of negative Nancys, neg negative Nancys wouldn't get me to where I wanted to go. And so we would sit there and gossip. We would sit there and not take action on what it is that we wanted. We would be together and not, like it wouldn't be beneficial for anybody. And it, I've literally cut people off that want to gossip. Like I, like in a leadership role, like gossiping to me, I, I used to gossip a lot. <laughs> I used to gossip and gossip about this person and that person. And I'm like, wait a second, I'm wasting all this energy talking about a person who's not even here. And I'm like, okay. And then I took a leadership course. And that was one of the agreements was to not gossip. And I'm like, Ooh, I didn't realize how much I gossiped about other people, including myself. And doubting myself and I was like okay let me take this on let me take on not gossiping and it was hard <laughs> it was like whoa it was like I gossip a lot um but I took myself on and in the leadership course it was like restoring yourself with integrity like I had an agreement not to gossip I did the impact is you know it's I've wasted time I've wasted energy on, on talking about somebody and I probably said something mean about somebody else and so getting that like complete for myself was like, oh, wow. Okay. This is, this is powerful stuff. So yeah, I stopped gossiping. Like my friends, I, they used to call me to gossip. And I'm like, no more. I don't want to gossip anymore. I want to talk about your dreams and your goals and like what's important to you because that's, that's what I want to support you in. And I don't want to talk about this person mm. anymore. Yeah, that's it. And I think like you said, it, sometimes it's, sub it's subconscious people do stuff and we're not even aware of it we're aware of it it's like oh damn yeah when you think about how many minutes or hours go into it you know for like a week or something i remember like you know working in a restaurant and hotels and like oh my god like that was like i mean i'm not going to say any names but um yeah so somebody would you know work and it'd be working in the kitchen that person be absolutely fine and then they leave and then they'd be da, 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 about them and you think and then part of me thought what the hell are they saying about me when i when i leave the kitchen and come back in it i started feeling paranoid and oh and yeah it's 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 crazy environment sometimes but anyway um yeah got gossiping's like you know something people do and but when you break down you know the time where, that that time frame. Where, what what else could you be doing in that time? You know, isn't it mm. taking that time and then putting that into something else? And I think, like you said, caring or caring about other people's goals and and helping them is you know far more rewarding than you know the other side. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, and it was it was difficult, but it was definitely rewarding to be like, oh wait a second, we could talk about this instead and see like what it is that you're interested in and what it is that you want to create. And yeah. So that my, you train people how to listen to you too. You know, you train people how to talk to you. So I had to like call my friends and be like, we are not doing this today. We are not having these conversations anymore. I'm not going to sit here and listen to you cry about something for four hours. It's like, we're going to do something about what it is that you want to get done. And this isn't a coaching call. This is me supporting you as a friend. And if you don't want to deal with that, then maybe we shouldn't be friends. 
because I got to be around high vibrational people that are up to something big. Mm. Yeah, that's it. And what was their reaction? Was they a bit like taken back, I suppose, or like, uh, like, like surprise? Cause it's, it's surprising, like, yeah, because it's the yeah. whole Tammy is no longer that yeah. girl anymore. It's more like, okay, well, wait a second. Oh, she means she she wants to talk about that. She wants to talk about like what I'm interested in and what mm. I'm up to instead of gossiping. So yeah, mm. it's it's making that impact for that person that's listening. And mm. like even one of my dear friends, he used to call me. We used to gossip for hours, like nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, we're wasting so much time here. And now it's just. Now we talk and we're like, oh, what is it that you're doing? Where are you traveling to? What's going on? Let's walk, let's talk about family. What is it that you are you, are you gonna get married? You're gonna have a what is it that you're doing in your relationship? So talk about things that really matter instead of things that don't matter. It's those deep, it's those deep conversations, isn't it? Those meaningful conversations that you can have with someone and uh, you you just don't know what. Is going to open up for that other person or you know what they may do after that conversation as well after you know talking about certain things and i think that's that's something i, I think a lot more about now um you know since last year happening and uh, doing podcasts i think yeah doing podcasts especially and you know having these kind of conversations that we're having and thinking more about the kind of people i'm talking to and what I'm talking about, you know, and and if I, I mean, everyone's different has got their own interest, but some, some things that people talk about, like maybe the news or cer- certain things, I'm just like, I haven't got time for it, but I, you know, I had to make that, that, that emotional shift and decide on, on that, if that makes sense. It's like a shift almost, isn't it? You have to decide mm-hmm. I'm not going to do X, Y, Z anymore or I'm going to limit, limit it or whatever. Yeah. I'd rather talk to people about like, aliens and things that are interesting and like what do you know about this yeah. what do you know about area 51 yeah. you know? instead of the news like i'm not i don't even yeah. I don't turn on the news i don't talk about the news it's that is not my interest i rather mm. i leave conversations like that yeah i'm like i don't want to talk about elections i don't that's something i'm not interested in yeah and i rather talk about the cosmos and the stars mm. and meditation and oh mm. good song that you're listening to and mm you know what exercise are you doing like what what is that like what is mm. you know what what teas are you drinking those are the conversations that i'd rather be in than yeah talk about things that i have no control over that's it that's it and I, and you you definitely notice you know more of an uplifting yourself if you start kind of following what's right for you isn't it really um and have you, have you been uh reading any books recently have you got any time any books yeah i have um conversations with god my brother's um, is that graham hancock yeah i, graham, I think it, graham, it, it, is it graham hancock i think it, it yeah I think it's it? graham but that uh, yeah my book i have it conversations with god i, I always forget who the art who the author is <laughs> it, might, it might be graham hancock because my brother's got a few of his books he's got one just here called magicians of the gods it, yeah, it's O'Neill Donald Walsh. Oh, Neil. All right. Yeah, Conversations with God. It's it's he has like uh, four series, and he nice. sat down with God, and he wrote the entire series, and he has a conversation with him, and he just jotted down everything, and then made these four books, and it's brilliant. Like I'm just like I, I turn to the page, and it's like that's the answer I needed to hear for my day. Wow. So that one, yeah, that was really good conversation. Yeah, very deep. Yeah, no, that's awesome, and I think, I think that's that's the amazing thing with books, isn't it? You can. Um, I talked to my mum about it the other day. I was saying like books almost. Uh, you can identify with them, and probably, so if you experience something in parts of your life, they kind of, uh, you can't kind of almost connect with them. Almost, it's like, I I finished this book recently called uh, the Third Door. Oh. And it's it's this guy, and he, he basically goes and interviews lots of different kind of successful people. And I don't want to spoil too much, but he ends up winning a game show in, in real life by luck. And it was that kind of all of, he talks about, you know, there's, there's three doors in life, and it's basically kind of getting, 
you know, opening up opp- opportunities up for you kind of thing. You know, there's one way and one way out, but there's always like, you know, another way around kind of something. Mm. So it's his kind of journey, kind of reaching out to people to interview them. And he made this list of people and it kind of, I was looking at it and it kind of reminds me of my podcast. I'm thinking I'm reaching out to people. I'm trying to interview people. So I kind of connected with it, but um, but yeah, yeah. Reading's great. And I think it's, you definitely learn a lot, don't you as well? Yeah. I didn't go to college. So, I mean, I went to one semester in college and then realized I don't want to do this. And I'm <laughs> yeah. living my life through experience as I was like yeah. bartending at a restaurant, like thinking that's like, I'm going to do that for the rest of my life. Like I'm going to be a bartender. <laughs> and then I was like, oh no, I don't want to go to college. And everyone's like, oh my God, you got to go to college. Like society, like you have to go to college. You have to be married at this certain time. You have to have a kid at this certain time. And I'm like, not me. I'm, I'm okay. Mm. I'm, I'm going to live my life and live through life experience. And I don't want the debt of $120,000 worth of debt for books I could read through, you know, the library that I could go to. So reading really was like something good for me to do. Um, Cause I love reading. And then I heard mm. that like millionaires, they read a book a day. They're reading constantly like Warren Buffett. He reads every single morning, the newspaper and reads books every single day. He's like, if you're not reading, you're not learning. Mm. So it's, it's always good. Whether it's, it's um, whether it's documents that I read or something that like really interests me. I love reading. Mm. Like I just love learning more and more about things that I wouldn't know normally. And mm. books are something that you could escape in. I mm. do more like self-development books. I haven't done a novel in a while. The Alchemist is something I'm re-listening to because I get so much. And, and when you reread the book, you get it from a different perspective because you're not the same person who read it two, five years ago. So yeah. it's like rereading that book, like Think and Grow Rich is a, a book that is on my bookshelf that I constantly yeah. read because it's something I get nuggets from it. Like, oh, I didn't read it from that perspective before. And now I get it clear. Mm. So it's something that you continue reading and get different bits and pieces from it. That's it. And I think that that's it, isn't it? And I think like, you know, there's different perspectives and times in your life. And I, I read the alchemist and it's a really good book. And I think, you know, I, I definitely need to read it again. So, you know, that was, I was about 19, 20. So it was about, you know, six, seven years ago. And I think, you know, when you read, it's like when you watch a film, probably like the second time or something, it's like you notice things sometimes, you know, in a different way. It's like, you know, reading a book, you know, you see things that you probably didn't grasp as much as the first time. And um, my friend told me, uh, Don Sivsik, he's like the owner of this mathematics website. And um, he told me that there's like a one by three by 10 rule. He says, if you read it one time, you know, you kind of get it. But then if you read it like, you know, more and more, it goes into your subconscious mind, you know, the more you kind of go over it um mm. like you know with, with books and yeah the thinking of rich is a really good book that's, that's like a manual for life isn't it really? like a lot of different books <laughs> yeah that one is something i know it, it's that one will forever be on my bookshelf because you could just like have a question like what should i do with 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 whatever and then you open the book and there goes like the answer and you're like oh that's what i love about books mm. like, whatever a question i have it's like the, the answer is going to be right there on that page whatever page i i mm. pick up and do it's a little trick you know just to like get my mindset because there's answers everywhere and you, when you ask for the answer mm. the universe and god will give it to you like yeah. no matter what that's it is, is that there's that like interconnectedness isn't they with with the universe and energy and people and i think you know like it's like with you know me and you like you're in america i'm in the uk but there's like that connection and that that vibe you know we've got energy in the universe and how people kind of align don't you, don't you think it's like we met mm-hmm. on instagram you know like last year to, to if it seems yeah, yeah like a year yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like a yeah. year ago i know <laughs> yeah and um I, I just think it's so it's so special when you can connect with people you know in that kind of like you know, who people are you, who you're energetically on the same vibe with? I think it's it's so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and people put when you're. I I listen to uh, Kevin Trudeau. Um, you wish is your command, and he's 
it's he's so brilliant. He's like people, places, and things, and opportunities will come to you when you're feeling good about whatever it is. He's like, so feel good now. And it's about the feeling. It's not about the doing. It's not about the, the results that you have. Um, it's about the being and like being in that vibrational, like, okay, mm. this is what I'm, I'm going to feel good now. And mm. then do the things from that new space. And then you get to have the results that you want instead of like having something like, oh, if I have... I have a husband or I have a car or I have something that's going to make me happy. And then you get into a fight with your husband or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or whatever. And then it's like, well, what happened to you being happy? Yeah. It's coming from a space of being, doing, and then having. So Mm. yeah, it's very powerful. Mm. No, I love that. I I, I really agree. And I think it's, you know, your mindset, isn't it? And your energy and and putting out, you know, what, what it is that you want. And it's not just, you know, the kind of the items that you kind of have kind of thing, is it? There's a lot more to it. Um, I was thinking, did I, did I ask you last time? Actually, there's a new question that I've been asking and I don't want to put you too much on the spot, but if you could kind of like sit around a table with like, say, two or three people, you know, as anybody, mm-hmm. who would you pick? If they're you know alive, if if they're alive, if, if you can. Yeah, no, I mean the two people that I mentioned earlier would definitely be Elon Musk. Mm. Yeah, it'd be pretty <laughs> and cool. Warren Buffett. <laughs> Warren Buffett and Elon Musk. I would love to sit at a table with those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and pick their brains. And I'm sure they would learn something from me too, you know. Like yeah. we're they're not superior than me. We're we're human. But I would yeah. just love to like pick their brains and like learn about stocks and then also yeah. learn about like this the, the Elon Musk's brain must be like so brilliant and mm. coming up with ideas. And I'm sure I would get like a bunch of nuggets from both of them. So yeah, those are two gentlemen that I would yeah. love to sit at a table with and learn yeah. from. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah, no, that's they're really good people to pick. And yeah, they're they're just they're just on a different page, aren't they, really? And it, it, it's so mind blowing when you see some of the stuff that people are doing. You think, you know, where do they find the time to do that? You know, what 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 are they doing that other people aren't, and that kind of thing. This so it's important, isn't it, to have those kind of like people to kind of look up, you know, look up towards and role models and mentors and and this kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, who do you aspire to be? That's what I ask my clients: like, who do you aspire mm. to be? Because if it's if you think it, it's possible. But if you see someone else doing what it is that you want to do, and then you just follow their pathway, you don't compare yourself to them because they've taken one year, two years, five years, ten years to get to where they are. Mm. It's like aspire to be somebody that you look up to, even a mentor. Mm. Like I have two yeah. mentors. I have um, one's a real estate guru, and then mm. I have another one. He is a um, he's an entrepreneur where he started his business from nothing he worked in restaurants and stuff like that and now he has an amazing company that he built from nothing and we met seven years ago and yeah. i was like i want you to be my mentor and like i want you to be my friend and mentor because i want yeah. to learn from you and so we, we chit chat all the time on on instagram and facebook and text message and calls and mm. i did um, an interview with him at the beginning of uh the whole pandemic and stuff yeah yeah he just dropped so many nuggets and so many things. I'm like, oh my God, this is so amazing. And he's like, anything I could do to help and be of service to you and your business, please, like, let's create together. Mm. So it's good to have people to look up to because you yeah. build that community. Like I said earlier, that community is super important. Mm. Because when you fail, like, it's good to have support instead mm. of failing. Like, I'm failing right now when you get some support and they don't make it mean anything and they just help you through whatever it is that you need support with. Yeah, that's it. It's a really great point. Like, you know, so that's that community and that, that support network there who kind of going to, you know, be there for you in your journey, isn't it? And, um, you know, I, I definitely think, you know, I, I look up to you and what you do and, you know, your coaching yeah, and, you know, you. <laughs> no, you know, I mean, it. Uh, and, you, you know, your, your masterclass and, you know, what you're doing uh, right now because, you know, that, that stuff that I, you know, I want to do at some point and, you know, seeing you do it, you know, motivates me to do it. It's, it's nice. You know, it's, I'm really grateful to have, you know, this relationship with you and, uh, 
yeah, it really means a lot. Yeah, it's building with the intention you want to have for the mastermind. Like, I want women mm. to be a yes to their life. I want them to be like, all right, I want, I want to take whatever idea I have and make it my own business and plan, yeah. and whatever that is. And so the tools that I'll, I'm teaching in the masterclass is definitely something that's going to propel them to create whatever it is that they want. Because at the end of the day, like you say how it goes, nobody else, your family, your friends, society, they can't tell you what, which direction you're going in. You have a hundred percent say on exactly what it is that you want. So building that support in that community, because I feel, I feel a lot. Oh my God, I feel so many times, <laughs> but I have a relationship with failure now. Now mm. I don't look at myself as a failure. I just failed at performing and I just, mm. and I, and I like messing up. I like taking messy inspired actions. I like having a couple no's before I get to a yes because it builds my character, it builds my strength, it builds me to be like, oh, they just said no for right now and not make it mean yeah. anything. So that community around me supports me and like, oh, someone said no to me. Oh my God, I'm a horrible coach. No, yeah. just someone said no to you. Don't, think, <laughs> don't take it personal. It's They just weren't ready to take up on your mm. offer sooner or later mm. they will. But yeah, it's, it's a game to me now. Now it's not like so mm. um, significant. That's it. And I think that's, that's something that I've definitely learned. And that's something that I think is so important is like, I think like, you know, getting no's and rejections and, you know, those, those, those setbacks and those things that, that come your way, it's like thickening your skin, isn't it? It's like a resilience, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah, it, it hurts and it's crap, but yeah. it doesn't hurt as much sometimes, you know, and if it does, then over time, it, you know, it doesn't have that same effect. And it's that, Probably because, you know, it's, it's, it's using that as motivation, isn't it? And you see a lot of people sometimes who have no failures or no's or setbacks for a long time, and then they do. And it's like you said, it's like the world's over, but but they haven't kind of had, you know, those, those, same, those same experiences. And I remember having it with job interviews, you know, like in applications and, oh, God applying for jobs spending whole you know days applying for jobs and then you you don't get any any and your life spent applying for all these jobs and it's like you know it, it's horrible is there something wrong with me is there something yeah. wrong? am i not getting the job and then you internalize like oh my god i applied for like 40 jobs no one's saying yes everyone's saying no is there something wrong with me is there something wrong with my resume oh my god yeah they get into that mindset i mean look at starbucks starbucks got 271 no's from banks and they continue to get no's and no's and no's and now they're they're valued at 11.3 billion dollars so every time you drink a five dollar seven dollar starbucks yeah there you go like that's like a taste of like what it looks like to be resilient mm. in in being able to like take the no's even kfc look at i mean KFC yeah all these banks and everyone said no everyone said no like oh you're crazy look at that chicken like what are you talking about in this chicken recipe blah 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 and he got to be who he is at the age of 60. Mm. So when i hear people saying oh well this person said no i'm like go get more no's go yeah get more no's then you're if you're not you're not doing it right if you're not getting a lot of no's mm. i want you to upset people i want you to like really shake the like <laughs> mm. shake people until mm. you you get the that that thick skin to go mm. through whatever it is because business isn't easy but it could be fun mm. yeah so make it a no, game. I, yeah i love that and i think that's so important and true and i think you know i've had a podcast and reaching out to people or asking people for guests and it's like sometimes you don't get any reply or it's just mm. a straight no or yes and then no reply or yes and then it happens and i think I, I had one recently and i felt like someone kicked me in my chest because it was like okay oh no that's a no but it's like you know that you know it's that like i said it's that extra layer where i need to you know do the work and just get stronger in areas you know like you know bounce back bounce back from the setbacks and things like that and i think as you, you know as long as you're taking accountability for that isn't it and you're going you're not letting it stop you that's kind of well, you've got to go with it, isn't it? Um, but are you okay for time? I know we said a lot as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay for time. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's so important. And but 
I, I definitely, you know, really in my you know, the work that you do and the posts that you put out. And I think like, it's, it's all about, as you said as well, in the, in these times, you know, like we, we mentioned like, you know, pivoting and adapting as well. And, um, if, if something isn't working out, then there's, there's, there are other areas that you can kind of work on, if that makes sense, or go into. Yeah, if it, I mean, I tell my clients and I tell people, like, if this doesn't really light you up, don't do it. Like, mm. go, like, a lot of my clients are like, who's my ideal client? Like, I love doing this exercise with people because they think it's like concrete, like, oh my God, I want to work with engineers or I want to work with women entrepreneurs. I want to work with male to like lose the last 10 pounds. And then they get stuck on like, well, that is all I get to work with is that type of person. And that's like set in stone. I'm like, no, go get yourself a couple clients that are in the same ideal client avatar. Like what it is that, who do you want to work with and who do you want to help and who do you want to support? And what, what is it that you want? Like, what's going to light you up? And they're like, well, but I'm stuck on the, on the person I want to work with. I'm like, just work with somebody and Mm -hmm. see if that, like I worked with real estate agents I worked with, uh, before I worked with anybody, I was like, you have a pulse. I'm going to work with you. I'm going to see what we can do. And mm. that was really great. And then I was like, well, I love working with women because I want to support women and having what it is that they want to expand in their business. And so that really lit me up. And then I was like, well, mm. great. let me work with women entrepreneurs. And I was like, I love birthing ideas. So that lights me up. And then mm. I can change and shift. And if I want to do corporate coaching, if I want to do um, mm. bring in males. If I, at one point, you know, like males can be taking my programs and things like that and being my mastermind to support, um, mm. what it is that they're doing, I'll pivot and it's fine. Mm. It's not in con. I make it up. Everything's made up. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> Everything's it. Made up. So go find something that lights you up. And if it doesn't light mm. you up, don't do it. Yeah. That's a really great point. And that's something that I've been thinking about recently as well. Um, you know, like I, I'm, I'm qualified in coaching as, as well. And I, I was talking to my friend about it because we both did the same course together and we're still in touch. And we're saying like, you know, we don't kind of really know what our niche is. People always kind of go on about what's your niche, what's your niece, niche, I can't say niche, um, not, not niece. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, and, and it's like, I'm still kind of finding out like what area, I want to go and I don't really know my ideal client yet um but like do you think you don't really you, you know you just kind of find your way as you go along in, in you know in coaching and, and, and other areas is that like would you say how it kind yeah. of works as you said yeah I mean it's for me I ask my question like what am I excited to learn like what is something that I'm excited to learn so I go learn it and then I teach it and then I coach on it and then that's what really gets me excited. Mm. So your niche will come to you once you start getting messy with people and, and start like, hey, listen, I'm doing a beta program. You know, I have no idea how it's going to look and I have no idea what it's going to come, but I know it's going to be transformational. There's going to be community and there's going to be high vibration mm. people. And we're just going to work on our goals and we're going to work on our dreams. We're going to work on our desires, whatever it is that everyone's working on. And through the collective of co-creating and what mm. comes out of that and then you'll see what works what doesn't work and then you'll find your niche mm. so it, yeah. at the end of the day you look at like what's the outcome that you want to want to portray yeah. in your transformation and their transformation like what is that that's, that's going to really light them up as long as as long as you're lit up then everybody else will be lit up mm. yeah no I really i really appreciate you sharing that because that's something that you know i've definitely been thinking about and that's kind of about where i'm with it. you know like um it's like it's like how can I describe it? It's like there's a swimming pool right in front of you, and it's like how do I <laughs> jump in here? And how do how am I gonna swim in this water? Do you know what I mean? It's like it's a bit like that, but yeah, it's it's, it's all it's kind of great to get murky. It's great to yeah. like just jump head first and just get messy with it. And be like oh well, wait a second, this I don't want to do this anymore, and I don't want to do that, but I like this and I like that. Okay, mm. let's call it a business, and then yeah, help those people. And then what what's gonna happen naturally? is you'll start attracting those people. Like if you work with, you know, male business owners that are looking to scale their business and their mindset is all, you know, trauma and all that stuff. And you work through them 
you work mm. with them through whatever it is that they need to get through and you're like oh mm. it's good you know like you yeah. shut down it, it's it's great because it's like doctors if you look at surgeons mm. who gets paid more a general practitioner or a surgeon a surgeon mm. they because they're specific they're specific yeah. on what it is that they're they're like they're there's an ankle doctor, there's, you know, a surgeon, a heart doctor, they're specific on, on that thing. And a general mm. practitioner just helps everybody. So getting specific on what it is that your niche is, like really what lights you up. Yeah, that's it. No, definitely. I really appreciate the advice on that. And I think it's it's definitely so, so key. And I think what you mentioned, it's it's like just, just going out there and just finding out what it is that, you know, that, that, like she what makes you happy and what your driving force is, isn't it? And just kind of, you know, just keep tapping into that until you kind of find it kind of thing. You're usually your ideal client. Yeah. <laughs> the the yeah. troubles, the triggers, the trauma, yeah. the drama. You're mm. literally your ideal yeah. client. <laughs> so a lot of a self-awareness yeah. and assessing mm. and things like that. And like, okay, what did I have trouble doing? Oh, community was missing for me. Oh, yeah. my mindset. Oh, let me be a mm. you know mindset career coach. Okay, yeah, that, that sounds good. All right, let's go with that and see what what shows up. And then what's going to naturally happen is because you chose it and choosing it, like burning, like Tony Robbins loves mm. to say, he says, just burn the boats. You know, like mm. whatever that is, just burn the boats, and just it just just a hundred percent go with whatever it is that you want to go with, and then see what works and what doesn't work and then mm. who knows what's going to happen you can build an empire out of it yeah no definitely it's, it's powerful isn't it when you when you think about it you think of like you know what capabilities we have you know as people when we put our minds to it and decide to do it it's it's pretty powerful and um i was thinking as well like where where can people find like um this this mastermind are you, are you it, can people sign up to it? Um, um, is they it, can reach out to it? me and um, I could send them. Um, I don't have a link yet. Yeah. And I don't have a link yet. So definitely reach out to me. I'm putting that all together. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. A conversation with them, see if they're a right fit for it and see yeah, yeah, yeah. be of support and help them. So they can reach me on Instagram at, um, at coach underscore T-A-M-I. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And, and and I'll definitely, you know, share your content and anything that you, you know, you're doing, like, you know, your course and stuff. I, I can definitely put that out there and support you and whatever it is. Yeah, I can't wait. I know I got to do all the graphics and do all the, you know, stuff that doesn't yeah. really inspire me to do because I just rather just coach <laughs> and just get in a, like, yeah. oh, wait, there's stuff in the back end. So I'm yeah. to see like creating on Canva. Canva is really great for yeah. making all of that. Yeah. So getting my brand colors together and and making it, you know, presentable. Yeah. And just show up. Just show up for people and say, hey, this is it. Let's Let's work on whatever it is that you're working on. That's it. And that, that's what, you know, people don't see on the, on the, you know, the, the back end of things that, you know, the nitty gritty, putting things together. People always see the kind of tip of the iceberg of, you know, when you put it out, there's all those hours of time that go into making, you know, that, that thing that you're doing, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I wish you all the best and, you know, from that you're doing, I think you're doing a great job and um, yeah, I look, I look forward to, uh, you know, seeing what you're doing. Yes. So much coming up. I mean, all yeah. I do is have time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, but that no, I, I wish you. It's been lovely talking to you. Tell me again, uh, reconnecting, and you know, I wish I wish you all the best in your day. Thank you so much. I'm so proud of you and what you're doing and what you're building. I was there for your first podcast, and now I yeah. see all of your podcasts, and I'm so like. I I'm like so thrilled about what you're up to and what you're doing, and you got certified oh. as a coach, so um. You'll help out a lot of people. I know you will. And now you got yeah. your podcast down on lock. I'm sure your first podcast was like, oh, what do I do? Yeah. Like, I'm in my car. I got a mic. I'm good. I can talk about anything at any time. So I love who the people that you bring on. So thank you for having me. No, no, you're welcome. I really appreciate your support. And um, I'm really grateful you know, to be your friend and you know, stay in touch. It really means a lot. Oh, we're gonna blow up together. How about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, it'll be awesome. <laughs> awesome, exactly. That's it. Exactly. But um, but no, have a great day and all the best. Thank you. You're welcome.